Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you're not new. Thank you so much for sticking around. Welcome to my channel if you are new. I'm Margie and we do shenanigans here. And in today's shenanigan, we're going feral. I don't know why, but feral is the only word that I can use to describe this endeavor. So cutting to the chase, I had deleted all the footage of the making of my swim dress from Titanic. Okay, I apologize if my face is lit like garbage, but you're gonna have to live with this setup because this is my, already my second time filming this. The only logical solution to this problem was to take my brand spanking new rose Titanic dress and just take it into as many bodies of water as I could in the course of 48 hours. <laughs> So I wanted to see whether I could actually feasibly survive the Titanic sinking in this dress because hey, this is the swim dress, this is the sink dress. It's got to have earned its reputation, no? Let's see how realistic the movie had it. So let me explain to you the layering of 1910s undies really quickly that I wore underneath that dress. I'll show you the layering and the closures in a couple clips and then back to me to tell you how my explorations went. So the layering of a 1910s woman's outfit would have been combinations, which is your skin layer, your undergarment that is basically a crotchless romper. Then you would have worn a corset. I do suspect Kate Winslet, so Rose is wearing a corset in these scenes because it her silhouette just looks very corseted. She would not have been tight laced, however, I am pretty sure. Uh, then you would have worn your stockings and your shoes, which upon closer inspection, Rose does wear in the movie, both stockings and of course shoes. And then usually you would have worn a petticoat, but I chose to forgo any petticoats because as you will see in the sequence where I show you the layering of this dress, it's got five layers uh, and I didn't need a petticoat. So I just chose not to wear it, which is also what appears to be the case with rose in Titanic. And of course, your final layer would be the gown, which is also layered. Past Margie will show you the layering of this gown and exactly what we're dealing with in terms of, you know, how many layers are there and closure. She is post dunking in water. So let's start from the bodice layering, shall we? Um, if I can get her, okay. So this is the back. It's the sash, obviously, which adds a lot of weight. Not as much as I would think, but quite a bit. So this is the lining. It's made up of two layers, one of Georgette here and one of cotton. And then the outer part of the bodice is made out of two layers of chiffon, lilac chiffon over gray chiffon to make this darker lilac. Then here in the front, and obviously it's got the beading, but that doesn't really influence the weight. Um, it's very light. Here in the front, you have pleats, which is just one layer of chiffon and lace, which would honestly count the same as this little layer. Although here continues all the way through here. You can kind of see it now that it's wet. So to be fair, this chiffon sash did add, add to the weight quite a bit because it's quite substantial. It's a lot of fabric, that much. Look at that. So that would have definitely added the rosette here on the back. Where is it? I don't think would have, you know, been too heavy. Like it's not that bad. So meanwhile, for the layers of the skirts, we gotta layer down. First layer, blue. Oh, this is inside out, hold on. Okay, much better. Oh, look how graceful that looks. So first layer is this blue, it's the heaviest layer, it's Georgette, and it's quite thick because it had to be my most opaque layer since I was planning not to wear any petticoats underneath. The skirt layer, which has been dirtied a little. Ew, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. No, no, you're getting the hell out of here. No, hell no, 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 sir, 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 sir. Oh my God, what are you doing in my dress? <laughs> Hold on, sir, I'm gonna escort you outside. It's your regularly scheduled program. Little buddy really did not wanna get out of there. I swear, oh my, is this a bug? No, no, it's just lint. So in my life, if there's any more of those, I will act absolutely like scream. Um, you will hear me in real time wherever you are, you will hear me. 
<laughs> then the second layer with the hem unpicked because again I mentioned this on my Instagram it was so sandy that and dirty that I had to unpick it like it was full of sand like this part was this part was full of sand so I had to unpick it to get all the sand out so that's the second layer you have a third layer of violet and this you can tell in the picture um, the white and the blue are the same length. Violet is slightly shorter than the, the white and the blue. Then you have one layer of pink, which is heftier than the violet, but still pretty light. And then one other layer of violet. Completely forgot to show you the closures. So we have th two snap closures. Oh, one of them actually broke. I thought it just busted open, it broke. Yeah, so we have two snaps one hook and eye, then one last snap closure over here. Did this one break as well? No, I just have to find it. Uh, this would close with this so that it's not visible. And then this rosette would snap onto the other side of the bodice. So yeah, it was so, so hard that this snap closure broke. Oh my gosh. All right, back to future Margie, who will tell you more about these two kind of adventures that I've had over the course of a weekend. So I have documented these more uh, consistently on my Instagram, at Margie Shenanigans, where you can also see the pictures I took in the sea. Speaking of seaside, that is where my first trial attempt at wetting this dress came. So I want to take pictures of this dress inside the water for a more cinematic effect. They turned out amazing. Go check them out on Instagram. And here are a couple just to show you. And the number one thing that immediately dawned on me as soon as I got into the water and as soon as I had to pick up the wet dress and walk back to the car was the weight. It was so heavy to carry all those skirts. Much heavier than I'd expected. Now, I do think my dress is slightly heavier than the dress dresses, I should say, used in Titanic, but it's pretty darn close. And I was expecting that, you know, in the pool that I was gonna get into the next day wearing the dress, I was gonna be struggling. And I was not that wrong. So pool Margie will now take over and you will get to witness the craziness that was <laughs> this experience. This is what we're working with. We have a duck, which is our lifeboat um, and just my best friend. And we have like that swimming thing, which is I think the door. Uh, we have deep end, shallow end. Okay, let's do this. I might regret this bitterly in a while. Okay, we're doing this. Now I'm turning back. I'm here behind the camera. The first test that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down those stairs over there because Rose does go down stairs and that's when her dress gets wet. So let's do that. It's actually so cold. stockings in that scene she probably was but the stockings are actually doing a pretty good job of keeping you warm like obviously this water is not below freezing but I mean better than nothing uh, the layers are popping up really beautifully look at those layers so now we're gonna test out if we can actually swim in this thing so I'm gonna leave my glasses here um, the dress is definitely hugging me down. Oh my god. Oh, it's hard. It's oh. It's actually harder than I thought. It's actually much harder than I thought. Okay, it's definitely hard to swim in this. And it's not because I'm wearing the corset. It's because of the layers of the dress. Okay, it's definitely much easier to do this 
with my legs to get them up and down rather than to do the wide like this. So let's try. Oh, oh, this is. Oh, let's try this. This is not a problem here. Oh, my corset is actually amazing. It's hot. Please hold it as I fix my corset under the water. This one, oh, one of the weirdest things I've ever done in my entire life. It must have been tough. It is tough in a pool. Especially because if you count that your adrenaline would have been much higher than my adrenaline is now. It would have been more tired and even more out of breath and you would have been cold so your body would have been freezing up so another thing that i want to test out is whether my, my shoes over here we're gonna come off uh they're looking pretty stable for now this is really heavy because i can um i do think that rose's chiffon would have been considerably lighter than mine oh my undies are showing <laughs> um but uh, this is what I could get my hands on. Is the camera still filming? Let me check if it's still filming. Clinging to my body. This is and my shoes are full of water. <sighs> this is a workout. Okay. We're doing cannonball, folks. This is also pretty movie accurate because hers was clinging to her body, but much more elegantly. Now we're replicating the sinking. So... I have to swim that way to get to the door, which I decided that the door is going to be my gap here. Let's just pretend that that, the, that is going to be like a human obstacle or something. Uh, okay. Here goes, I guess. I have no jack to help me. in that the corset kind of changes the way you breathe. And that's not necessarily a negative thing. I'm fine with corsets. I usually do not have problems with corsets. But when you're doing such intense physical motion to quite literally save yourself, um, it's going to be different. I mean, this corset is under bust because it's 1910. I have a brassiere to support my bust. So, Rose's corset would have been under bus, over bus, as already as you see in the movie. So, the change of your breathing pattern uh, would have probably affected how the teeth do work, because obviously, the corsets weren't signed to survive the sinking of ships, because again, the Titanic was supposed to be unsinkable. Plus, Rose's corset wasn't even a sports corset, it was like a fancy corset. So, the corset kind of does affect you, but not that much. What really is making it hard for me is the weight of this dress. It is extremely heavy. Like, it's five layers of chiffon in my dress, plus the, well, the sash. It's really heavy. I want to swim from here to over there. Like, and I want to see how the dress truly affects the swim. I don't want to touch the ground even when I'm there. Let's do this. Of this swim is that some you know, hooks and eyes and lacings and snap closures are coming undone so your dress is less and less stable as a crawl not that bad I'm gonna try and 
do like a is it this which i'm usually not that good at this is not a hobble skirt not even the one in movie was a hobble skirt so i'm not seeing as much issue of movement again i'm just preoccupied as to the weight and then i really want to see if i can get onto that that duck because that's like the so let's see if i can get onto that duck i mean why am i even doing this testing if i was on the titanic i would have died of a heart attack the second i saw the iceberg i think this is the the more likely way that rose would have had of swimming because she wouldn't have been taught how to swim i've been taught how to swim since a very young age so i know how to do the crawl thing she wouldn't so she would just be frantically moving her arms and legs to try and get to something that would hurt her survival it's really heavy when you're vertical which i do think that rose would have been in a vertical position because again not being taught how to swim Okay, let's turn this. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I think this is harder. I don't think I can do it. I think this is harder than it would have been with an actual door because that's inflated. See, when I'm doing this, it's really hard. But when it's horizontal, it's much less heavy. This really puts it into perspective for me. How truly hard it must have been to like actually be in that experience. I'm gonna try and do all this thing. I'm gonna try and do the lay down thing because she lies down. So I'm gonna do it on the dock because I do my own. Get out! Stepped on my hand. One up. best way to swim in this dress which i don't know how to call this stroke i'll put it in text but again i have been taught how to swim rows and not a novice but just for the sake of video this is the most hydrodynamic way to swim with this dress it moves with the dress and it creates a movement in the dress and it makes the dress actually cooperate with you as you swim. That is not the way Rose would have been swimming because Rose was trying to survive. And she would not have known that stroke. Please, we have to collaborate. She would not have known that stroke. And I was swimming much more calmly than she would have been. And we have to count her adrenaline levels, swimming experience, temperature of the water. Um, yeah, I think I'm done here craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm gonna go rinse this off because chlorine. This is completely rinsed off of seawater now because it did stink of seawater a little bit. The, this dress is definitely clinging on to me right now. Look at this. I should probably say don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. Okay, let's see how many closures of my swim dress actually popped open. The dress is 100% open. Which, except for the hook and eye. So if the dress would have closed with just hooks and eyes, it wouldn't have been open. Um, I put snaps in here just because I hate hooks and eyes. There is a hook and eye here, um, but yeah. So see how it clings to my, my body now? Mine is definitely less transparent than the one that Kate Winslet was wearing. I'm getting off the shoes now, and I wanted to note on the fact that the shoes did not come off. Like, I feel like that is so cool because one of the most like prevalent artifacts that we have on the bottom of the sea from the Titanic wreck are shoes. And I thought these were definitely gonna come off because you know they're tied on by a dainty satin ribbon. But hey, moral of the story, if your satin ribbon is tied on pretty strongly, they're gonna survive a shipwreck. Your shoes are not gonna come off. And also, Rose's stockings in the ending scene, like in the door scene where she's laying down um, belly up on the door, her stockings are all rolled, rolled up. Mine, and it did not roll up, and mine stayed on. Of course, she would have been in the water for longer than me, but, oh my God, oh my God. I do not recommend this 
do not do this. Also wanted to come on record and say that my first time in a pool and in the seaside this summer, we're wearing the swim dress. <laughs> also, I took the pictures yesterday. Um, <laughs> while a bunch of people in my age group partying in front of a bonfire. Meanwhile, me just like walking into water and five layers of chiffon and my dad just being like, are you sure about this? And me being like, yes, yes I am. Okay, this is concluding Margie. You have seen me dive into the pool and that boy oh boy was it fun, but also freaking eye opening. So as you have seen in that footage, the dress really was hydrodynamic and allowed me to move without much effort when I was horizontal in the water. As I have mentioned a few times in the pool footage, I have been taught how to swim since a very young age, so I know a variety of strokes, you know, to save myself in situations of emergency and to help save others. However, that would not have been the case with Titanic passengers, first class, third class, whatever. They would not have known how to swim in all likelihoods, or at least not to level that we modern people are taught to swim today. Also, the Titanic was thought to be unsinkable. So you really didn't think you needed how to swim. And of course you didn't pack any hydrodynamic clothes. And that kind of desperate struggle to keep your head above water and get on a floating object in a vertical position was when it was the hardest for me to actually keep my head above water and, you know, survive, even though I was in a safe setting. Because the dress was pulling me down. All the weight of the wet skirts was physically pulling me down and I was extremely exhausted. And I, I won't lie, it was a bit scary in some moments because it was eerie that I was kind of recreating a feeling and I was expecting the corset to be more of a hassle, to be honest, but it wasn't that bothersome, in truth be told. Of course, when you wear a corset, it does change the way you breathe. Attention, change, not restrict. If the corset is well made, it will not restrict the way you are breathing. I was not restricted at all. Of course, I couldn't bend forward normally. I couldn't have slouched like I'm slouching right now, but it, it wasn't that great an impediment to my movement because I wasn't trying to bend anyway. I was actually trying to be up, as upright as possible to get on a floating object and to swim with my torso completely flat. So the corset didn't impede my movement, but because it changes your breathing and it kind of shifts your breathing, this is not scientific at all. The hyperventilation that I went into because I was really struggling was not as easy to sustain as normal breath would have been, keeping in count the fact that the corset had not been seasoned on me. I am a really bad corset wearer sometimes because I'm just too lazy to season my corset if I know that I'm not gonna be wearing it for a proper amount of time. And by seasoning the corset, I mean you wear it loose, then you wait a couple minutes, tighten, wear it, then wait a couple minutes, tighten even more if you want. I didn't do that, I just put it on, tightened it. I, I was more out of breath. It's not like I felt like I couldn't breathe, but I felt it becoming harder and harder to breathe, but I always felt safe. So in that moment where I thought it was harder to breathe, I just had to take a rest. So the answer to the question that we have all been waiting for, the whole reason why I tested this out with science, if you could even call this science, could I have survived the sinking of the Titanic? Now, a premise to this is that I would have died of a heart attack as soon as I saw the iceberg because woo I have raging anxiety, so seeing that iceberg would have been the death of me. Just knowing that the ship was sinking, I would have been like, bye, I'm not doing this. But if I, if perchance I had survived up to the moment where the stern was sinking, could I have survived wearing that dress? with no knowledge of swimming because I'm putting myself in the conditions of a Titanic passenger so I wouldn't have had the knowledge of swimming that I myself in the 21st century world that I live in have. Yes and no. So a lot of the scenes in the sinking sequence make sense to me now because you know when Rose is dunked underwater by that guy and she can't move I thought wait is the shock of the cold water that bad that you can't move? And it wasn't the shock of the cold water. I think it was because her dress 
plus the heavy wool coat from Cal that she was wearing were having a gravitational pull. They were doing nothing for her except for weighing her down to the bottom and that's why she had to get Jack to help and I feel like that's why Jack was much more successful in moving around in that sequence because he was wearing very little clothing compared to Rose. Um, and Rose, again, being vertically, kind of activated that pull of the wet clothing down to the bottom of the seat. And that is why Jack had to help her on the door. So what I'm getting into here, and the answer to the question is yes and no, because if I hadn't had help, as you have seen on the footage, and the floating object, aka the giant floating duck, would have been a higher object or an object that I would have had to struggle with someone else with. I don't think I could have gotten on that floating object and by proxy survived. But if the floating object would have been, you know, flatter and more easily approachable without any struggle or at least little struggle in there and or I had another person to help me like Rose had Jack, I could have realistically survived. Now we're not getting into temperatures here because obviously the sea and the pool that I went into were not freezing. I couldn't do that. Uh, surprisingly, the pool was cold, but not that cold. The, the sea was warmer than the pool. So with that, I wanted to emphasize that of course the victims of the Titanic and the story of the Titanic are not a subject to be taken lightly. This of course is meant to be a lighthearted kind of experiment, but it's I think it's really important and powerful to remember that all those people died. And you know, I think we should be grateful that ship technology has come this far and that now we have swim lessons because I sure am. I will say though, the stockings and the layering on my body really did help. Like the amount of undergarments that I was wearing prevented me from being too cold. So that could have been an interesting theme to explore if I had the possibility of going into that freezing cold water, which it would have taken some convincing, but I would have done it. So without further ado, we are done with this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will now leave you to one last sequence of my dramatic reenacting of some iconic water scenes in Titanic. And I will see you in my next video. Check out my Instagram if you wanna see more of this swim dress, more details on how I sewed it, because I do have a little bit of that on there. It's at Margie Shenanigans, go check it out. And uh, if you also wanna see me in the trunk of a car because my dad did not want me to wet his car seats and he was kind enough to bring me and bring me back to my house after the sea photo shoot. Boy, was that interesting experience riding in the trunk of a car. So if you're interested, go check my Instagram out. Also subscribe if you're interested in more historical clothing content and in more sewing content. I promise there is more sewing on the horizon for you. And give this video a like if you liked it and share it with a Titanic fan. It would really help a lot. I will see you in my next shenanigan, which will hopefully be slightly less unhinged, but I make no promises. Bye bye I promise.